let's have a look at the derivatives of the trig functions. When considering the differentiation of trig functions, angles are regarded as being measured in radians. The derivative of sine x is cos x, which can be proven using the definition of a derivative. Now that's what this video is going to be about. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Then, the other derivatives can be determined using the derivative of sine x, as well as using trig identities and the rules for differentiation. That's all going to be in the next video. This video and the next video are purely for um, background information, so proofs are not examinable. So let's make a note here, proofs are not examinable. But I know many of you don't like to just learn something off by heart without actually knowing where it comes from. So these two videos will go and address the question of why when we look at our derivatives. So we're first going to have a look at the der derivation of the derivative of sine x. There's two things we need to remember as background information when we do this derivative. The one thing is, remember the limit definition of a derivative, in that a derivative of a function is equal to the limit as h tends towards 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x of h. So that's the one thing we need to remember. The other thing is known as a compound angle identity. Compound angle identity. We haven't done compound angles this year, but you will do them in core maths in grade 12. So we'll address this more then. Let's just um, use it for the moment. So what the compound angle identity says is that if I've got sine of an angle plus an angle, that is equal to sine of the first angle times by cos of the second angle plus cos of the first angle times by sine of the second angle. So we're we going to use that in this proof and again you will do the proof of this actual identity next year in core maths and you'll look at it a little bit more in depth. Okay so let's start our derivation. I'm trying to find the derivative with respect to x of sine x. So I'm going to start with my limit definition of derivative. So I'm basically doing it from first principles. So I've got the limit as h tends towards 0 of my function, but in place of x I've got x plus h. If you look back here, it's my function, but in place of x I've got x plus h. So my function in this case is sine x. So I've got sine of x plus h minus sine of x, all divided by h. Now this is where I use my compound angle identity. Yeah, I've got sine of an angle plus an angle. I'm going to bring in that compound angle identity. And don't forget your limit. I've got limit as h tends towards 0 of sine of the first angle multiplied by cos of the second angle plus cos of the first angle multiplied by sine of the second angle. So I've replaced that, what I've highlighted in yellow, with this. And don't forget that you also have a minus sine x sitting there on the end, and it's all divided by h. Right, from this point I'm actually going to rearrange my numerator so that the sign x's are next to each other. You'll see in the next step why I need to do this. So I'm going to rewrite it and I'm going to put the cos x sine h term first. 
then yeah. I've got my minus sine x. And then this first term here, the sine x cos h, I'm going to put last. So I've got plus sine x cos h all over my denominator of h. So now I've rearranged. Now, the reason why I did that rearranging is so that in the last two terms, so let's actually highlight these last two terms. In those last two terms, I want to be able to take out a common sine x out of those two terms. So let's do that. I've got my cos x sine h. I take out a negative sine x there. So in my brackets, I'm left with 1 minus cos h all over h. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split both those terms in the numerator over my common denominator of h. So I've got limits as h tends towards 0 of cos x sine h over h minus sine x 1 minus cos h over h. So I'm finding the limit of all of that. So I'm going to put a bracket on the outside so we can see it's the limit of everything. Now one of our laws of limits says that the limit of a sum or a difference, so this minus that, is the limit of that minus the limit of that. So now I'm going to split that limit. So here I've got limit as h tends towards 0 of, here's my first term. So it's of cos x sine h over h minus the limit as h tends towards 0 of sine x multiplied by 1 minus cos h over h. So I've split that limit. Now if you have a look here, the limit is with respect to h. So this cos x and the sine x, they're not influenced by that limit because my limit is only the h tending towards 0. So what I can do in each case is I can take that cos x out and I can take that sine x out. So here I'm going to have cos x multiplied by the limit as h tends towards 0 of sine h over h minus, and I take that sine x out, minus sine x times by the limit as h tends towards 0 of 1 minus cos h over h. Now if you think back to the exercise that you did on limits, first of all here is quite a common limit, so the limit as h tends towards 0 of sine of h divided by that same thing, my h, that limit is going to be 1. Now again you look back at that exercise that you did and you'll find that one of the questions you did was the limit of 1 minus cos of an angle divided by that angle. And if you remember correctly that will give you 0. So this limit here gives you 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace the first one with 1. So now I've now got cos x multiplied by 1 minus sine x multiplied by 0. It's obviously cos x times 1 gives you cos x minus 0 is cos x. So what have we proven here? We have therefore proven that the derivative of sine x is equal to cos x. And that's what we're going to use 
to prove all the other derivatives of trig ratios.